kills us. That's it. No Valhalla, no hell, no afterlife. Ever. It does not attack. Oh. Mom made them sound more dangerous than that. Then do not drop your guard. Come. sound like a soul leader. What do you think it is? We shall see, boy. Oh, there do I see my mother. Oh, there do I see my father. Oh, there do they call to me. Oh, there do they call to me. Oh, there do they call to me. That bow is a little big for you, isn't it? My mother made it for me. Said I'd grow into it. Find your way home. You are free. We're taking our ashes to the highest peak in the realms. Ashes? It was her last wish. Where must we go? To a realm beyond your own. There's only one person who can get you where you need to go. They call me Mamiya! Smartest man alive. First, you need to cut off my head. Wait, what? That axe you got. You gotta handle her special. Not of this realm, but there's no mistaking it. He doesn't know, does he? About your true nature? Or his own? The longer you wait, the more damage you do. He will resent you, and you may lose him forever. You're next! I'll rip your head off! There are consequences to killing a god! Why? How do you know? How do you know? Power. This weapon, any weapon, comes from here. But only when tempered by this, I discipline the self-control of the one who wields it. Open the door! We need your help! This is no ordinary illness. The boy's true nature, your true nature, fights within him. So I'm a man now. Like you? No. We are not men. We are more than that. The responsibility is far greater. Can you kill something that big? Pre-order and get three shield skins for in-game. PlayStation. Are you gonna do it?
said I was cursed. You think I'm weak because I'm not like you. You do not know everything, boy. No. But at least I know the truth now. The truth. Hurry on, boy! Okay! The truth. from home, aren't you? And here I thought your kind was supposed to be so enlightened, so much better than us. The gods of these realms don't take kindly to outsiders, trust me. When they find you, and they will, they'll make things difficult. Wait here. I will handle this. Oh, that was uh, something, that uh, <laughs> fight. <laughs> On our journey, we will be attacked by all manner of creature. To be effective in combat, a warrior must not feel for his enemy. Close your heart to their desperation. Close your heart to their suffering. The road ahead is long and unforgiving. No place for a boy. You must be a warrior. But not everyone is bad. Mother always said to be open to those who can help. Who you were before doesn't matter. This boy is not your past, he is your son. And he needs his father. knife. It belongs to you now. What for? A test. She taught you to hunt, yes? 
Yes, sir. Then show me what you know. I am hungry. Feed us. What are we hunting? You are hunting deer. Which way? Your hunt, you tell me. South? Is that a question? South. Down, boy. Sorry. You must think. Do not simply react. Be calm and plan. It's just I'm not used to hunting. Oh, I've been here. There it is. Hold. <laughs> what are you doing? Now its guard is up. Only fire! Only fire? When I tell you to fire. I'm sorry. Do not be sorry. Be better. Find it. Find it. My bow back. I can help you fight. I'm ready. You have yet to prove that. I need a chance. You had a chance. I need another. Then find that deer. Back away, boy! Here's your chance! Show me you are ready! Boy! Wait! What? Don't! 
I can't believe we fought a real troll. And you froze when I told you to kill it. I know, but he was staring right at me. How could I look him in the eyes and him. kill him? I thought your mother taught you to hunt. She did, but I never had to kill him. She always did that part. Then it is time for you to learn. Father, look! Wait for my mark. Relax. Do not think of it as an animal. It is simply a target. Clear your mind. Exhale and release. My God. Good. what you started.
Gather round, mortals. For the first time, hear the tale of young Atreus's maiden trip into the perilous Norse wilds, where malice and danger abound. Attempting to help a vulnerable creature, the boy wandered out beyond his protected woods alone. But I can't tell the whole story here, can I? You'll have to step inside. Atreus awoke to find his father missing. Not that there was anything unusual about that. Tasked with retrieving their dinner, Kratos would often take leave on day-long hunts. Why it took all day, Atreus never fully understood, but he knew better than to ask. After a quick breakfast, the boy got up and headed outside to practice his archery. He drew his bow taut, let his deep breath loose, and released an arrow. It sailed far beyond his target, becoming just another stick in the woods. The boy sighed. He'd have to find it later, likely when he wasn't looking for it. Determined to hit the target this time, he grabbed another arrow and focused hard. He held the string till his arm burned and let it fly. A bullseye! Well, almost. Maybe if he looked at it from a certain angle. You know. His mother called. And though he wasn't quite done yet, Atreus put his arrows down and went inside. Every day she would teach him, mostly language and archery. Honestly, the kid was pure dead brilliant, reading and writing on his own already. Today she gave him a lesson he was especially excited about. The creatures of the Norse wilds. Berserkers, trolls, witches and even the undead. After answering her son's many questions, Atreus' mother sent him back out. He fired a few arrows, missing with most of them. He wasn't a bad archer, really, but he wasn't easy on himself either. Frustrated, the little bairn sucked off into the woods. Don't sulk yourselves. Follow the boy to the next area. Atreus climbed up and sat cradled in the branches of one of his favourite trees. On days like this, he liked to close his eyes, listen to the forest, and let his mind wander. This kind of solitude never felt lonely to him, perhaps because he could hear things others could not. Ever since he could remember, the thoughts of others, animals mostly, could intrude upon his own. He couldn't much control it, and he didn't tell his mother or father of it, but it only added to the boy's absolute captivation with what adventure might lie past his all too familiar woods. As Atreus craned his head in an attempt to hear even farther, a desperate cry for help crept in at the edges of his mind. Not a whisper in his ears, but rather a shout inside his skull. Atreus shot up, and as he did, heard a second voice, a call to adventure, taunting him with the promise of a hero's journey. He jumped down from the tree and ran toward the voices. They grew louder and louder, overwhelming him to the point that he halted abruptly, stumbling as his inertia nearly overtook him. He hesitated there, knowing it would displease both his parents to venture further. In response, the voices only grew more urgent, demanding his attention. The lad could barely concentrate with this cacophony filling his head. He decided to follow the cry for help. Even as he did, the other voice derided the boy, calling him a coward. But if Atreus were to disobey his parents, it would have to come with good reason. Surely, he thought, they couldn't be too upset at him for responding to a distress call. Nearly convincing himself this might be true, Atreus took a deep breath and stepped out of the protected woods he'd known all his life into the foreboding Norse wilds. Delve deeper into the woods, unless of course you're too frightened. Making his way through Midgard's unfamiliar terrain, the pained cry of a wounded doe rang out, carried on the frigid breeze. After attempting to study the patterns of nearby tree roots to use as a guide back home, he set off in the direction of the injured animal. He imagined himself as the gods from his mother's stories, travelling to distant realms on the great tree Yggdrasil. He was brave Tyr, mapping the unknown for the good of all the realms. He was the mighty Ullr, on a hunt for honour and glory. He was... lost. Completely and hopelessly so. The woods now seemed to be a repeating maze of trees and jagged boulders. 
His growing panic was interrupted by sharp screams of agonising pain. The wounded animal was near and in true peril. Forgetting his own dilemma, Atreus shot toward the cries of the beast. And there, in a clearing near a creek, he saw it. A wounded doe lay on the ground. The matted, blood-stained fur on its chest heaved up and down as it struggled to breathe. An arrow jutted out of its neck. But what hunter would seek an innocent doe and fail to finish it off? The animal looked Atreus straight in the eye. Its pained grunts eased now as its pupils contracted. The one he had called had come. You're safe now. I'm here, Atreus said, clumsily attempting to comfort the poor soul. You can let go. The doe's strained breath became shallower. It took one final gulp of air in and ceased to move. Atreus laid his hands on the doe's heart and softly recited Norse death rites, inspired by his mother's teachings. The boy sighed, and his eyes drifted upward. As they did, he noticed there was far too much blood on the ground for a simple arrow wound. The red stains in the snow trailed off into the deeper brush. Atreus jumped to his feet to follow it. What horrors await at the end of the trail of blood? There's only one way to find out. The boy didn't have to go far to understand. The trail of blood didn't belong to the doe, but to the hunter, who now lay in pieces at Atreus' feet. The boy's stomach rolled as he took in the scene. He held his breath, attempting to let the nausea pass. And that's when he heard something else. Something hidden by the dark forest, mere steps away and still breathing. He turned to see two creatures from his mother's stories. Heaving, vile, undead monsters of pure rage. Draugr. Atreus' eyes grew wide as they met the empty sockets where the Draugr's eyes were supposed to be. The larger one roared, then it charged! The boy went for his quiver. He found an arrow, but lost his footing. Crashing to the ground, the Draugr rushed ever closer. The larger one plucked Atreus from the ground. The monster bellowed, spraying rotten teeth and flaps of decaying gums. Its half-tongue flailed blindly like the death throes of a headless snake. It was... Dis... Disgusting! In desperation, Atreus stabbed out with his arrow again and again and again, and by pure chance he connected, striking the Draugr through a hole in its skull. The monster dropped him as he continued to scream and stab. The boy was lucky, but there was no time to celebrate. As the second Draugr raised his blade, Atreus shot an arrow. It exploded against the Draugr's sword, shattering it to pieces. Quicker than the boy could react, a shard of the blade sliced into his arm. He yelled out in torturous pain. But as the Draugr drew in for the final kill, Atreus wasn't afraid anymore. He was angry. The blinding pain turned to white-hot rage as his ears pounded. His vision glazed to pure red. As the creature bellowed with fury, so did Atreus. Two warriors with nothing left but anger and pain. The last thing the boy saw before the world went black was a ghostly white hand grabbing the Draugr by its throat. A small quiet question escaped Atreus' lips before he fell unconscious. Father?
on our journey, we will face many who will try to stop us. The road ahead is unforgiving, but a warrior never gives up. I understand. Show me. That drummer. Find an opening and take a shot. You missed. Sorry? Do not be sorry. Be better. Space your shots. Speed cost accuracy. Yes, sir! So this is that oh. scene from the trailer. Oh yeah, this is from the actual trailer. You think I'm weak because I'm not like you. I know I was never what you wanted, but after all this, I thought maybe things were different. You do not know everything, boy. No, nah. but at least I know the truth now. The truth. The truth. Why did you wait so long to tell me? I had hoped to spare you. You are welcome to surprise me. God of War is an amazing game. I think it's one of the best game ever. I connected the game because with Kratos' emotions, his goals, he, some, in fact, it's for the, his determination to, to make some things happen. This is the idea of the game, don't give up. Oh. My name is Emmanuel Mojica. I am from Jalisco, Nayarit, in Mexico. My passion is God of War, and I live with my mother and with my uncle. I almost finished my career at my university, and then my grandmother died. And I feel very bad because she was our familiar pillar. Then my mother gets sick. So I have to, to take uh, two jobs to resolve that kind of problems. I was working 16 hours a day and was a little complicated. And that period of my life was very, very hard. Maybe I will play on a game for maybe escape from this uh, crappy life and have something fun. 
God of War is the story of a mortal man ascending to the ranks of a god. Kratos, the tragic human, caught in this familial cycle of mistrust. That, to me, was the biggest sort of aha for the next game. I knew I needed to connect this to something personal. Boy! Our son was going through the struggles of having very long bedtimes, right? And it just really got me thinking heavily about how would Kratos deal with this situation? What does the, the, the guy whose entire life centered around vengeance, what would it be like if a guy like that tried to make the right decision? I struggled a lot trying to find what the story was, so there was a tremendous amount of pressure and a lot of self-doubt. So to connect with a gamer who says, this affected me, that is invaluable. My first experience with a game was because my cousin introduced the game. Hey, you want to play a game? Yeah, OK, let's do something. I have a, a one hour a day and I start to play. That helps me. I really want to see how, how we'll end this kind of game. So you start to fight, you submerge the game. You don't feel like, oh, I am playing this game with the control. No, you are inside the game. You feel all, all the Kratos feel. And that was my escape. Something inside of me feel like a Kratos when somebody say, you can change your destiny. I never give up. Like a Kratos, never go, I never give up. God of War began as the third person action adventure. We were deep in Greek mythology. It's not really Kratos, it's Greek mythology. It was an interesting perspective. It was not a perspective I shared. You know, to me, God of War is Kratos. Creatively, I didn't want Kratos to become stale. Norse is a very different mythology for this round. This change was very deliberate. It's very controversial. I made a promise to myself that I wasn't going to hold anything sacred. Here's a chance. Show me you already. Yes, sir. Kratos' voice, I have to understand what is he's saying. And I take my dictionary and start to say, oh, it means that word. And I start to study English because God of War. I really love English. And I combinate my, my, my two goals to teach and teach English. I was the first person in my family to finish the university. When you are a teacher, you can change the future to another person's. You can change the vision, the vision to the children's, and you can create a better future teaching. Here, you have to write in simple pass. I first heard about Emmanuel from Aaron Kaufman, our community manager, who had talked about this God of War fan. Had an idea, and Aaron said, uh, you know what we should do? We should bring this guy for the launch. We should take him up for the launch, let him see the press conference, you know, and then actually maybe play the game with him a little bit and kind of connect. Emmanuel, my spies tell me you are one of our biggest fans, and I'm super excited to meet you. So why don't you jump on a plane, get in a train, and drive an automobile all the way up here to sunny Santa Monica so you can see what the hell we are working on. Get on out here, dude. Oh, my God. For real? Wow, incredible excited. I am very, very happy and dying for be there. It's amazing. Hey, I don't know. You ready to go today? Yeah, my friend. All right. Ready. I am taking you to the PlayStation press conference. Oh, really? We're going there right now. I've even no, got that. Uh... come on, put it the gas no, 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 no. <laughs> As a creator, I think if you lose the connection with the audience, if you lose that ability to see those who actually consume what you do, you could lose steam in the hardest of moments to not understand why you do this. Oh man, my heart is... I know, I know. Your mother 
Rose Knife. Show me what you know. To connect with gamer who follows what the releases are and actually plays the hell out of that game, like this is awesome. Come by the studio, I'll show you some stuff. All right, man, have a good show. It's hey, great to meet too. you. Yo, see you, yeah, right. see you tomorrow. All right. Oh my God. Manuel. What's up, oh, man? Cody. How's it going, man? How are you? Very good, very good. How was last night? Oh, awesome. It was very interesting. A lot of big doubts about what is that, why it is new, how, how Kratos over there. Kratos wanted nothing more in this one than to have his son not fear him and not want to kill him. You know, that's the cycle he wants to break. He wants to create a situation where the next day is better than the one before. And it took him getting away from this, isolating himself and shunning the aspect of being a god. So through this whole story, you will play as Kratos, and you have this connection with the kid, this idea of an extension of Kratos. The kid is that, but it's somebody that you're teaching. You're training the future of the franchise. Every player that's it, that's is it. making... What is that? <laughs> it is an interactive medium, so it isn't, you know, we can say, oh, if it doesn't play well, who cares? You know, it, their opinion matters tremendously. It's like an evolution to this, this character. Yeah. It's different, different yeah. evolution. It's an evolution. Yeah, a lot of people have, you know, that feeling. When you try to make something different or completely different, a lot of people say, no, I, I don't want it. The, the game needs an uh, evolution. Yep. You are introduced a new character to the new God of War fans. So it's and maintain this. that through line. I think right now people are saying, you can't have a God of War game without the cinematic camera. It'll never work. And it's just patently false. Let's go play the game. Yeah, of course. For me, at least, having this through line of a character who you know is kind of this tragic immortal. But we like to know in our lives, when we fail, we can get up the same way that he can get up. It's like, like a, a new, a completely new lesson to say, okay, Kratos is to struggle every single day like you are doing in your yes. life. It feels better when it is grounded in some kind of reality, when these stories ring true. Yeah, exactly. And it's a wild experience because we make games in a, in a vacuum and we get uh, sort of used to what we're seeing. And it's great to do this, to reconnect with people who actually see it for the first time. Because as much as you believe in what you're doing, it's still that possibility that it could be bad, that you could be fooling yourself and everything you're doing is just terrible. Uh, because you have only the one view, everybody working on it, right? All right, so now is going to be the exciting thing of trying to figure out where the hell the Sony booth is at, <laughs> of which I have no clue whatsoever. This is awesome. That's fantastic. This new era to video games is, is very strong. The, the people are very serious. This is awesome. Wow. This personal perspective about the game, the personal way that he wants to see the game was simply incredible. Corey was a oh, big influence in my life for a lot of time ago, and for me it was a privilege to be with him. Well, thank you for coming out. Thank you. Thank oh. you very much. All I, right, dude. Very good. Travel safe. Me too. Okay, okay. Every single moment that I spend here, I will be in my heart forever. The best lesson I can learn is, is 
chase your dreams. It's don't give up. The most powerful thing that you can motivate somebody else to do something good. For me, that is the best gift ever. You, you can do it whatever you want if you have the perspective and the knocks to do it. Big problems for your character. Be strong. Okay, life, bring it on. Wow! Hey everybody, we're almost done, almost, with day one at E3 at oh, well. the PlayStation booth. And I've got a couple very yeah. special guests here the with me right now. That would be Corey Barlog. You are the creative director for God of War. Yes. Very yes. exciting. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Christopher Judge, who are you? Who uh, are you? I am fortunate enough to be playing Kratos. Oh man, that's awesome. Excellent. Thank Excellent. You. So you're playing Kratos. I want to talk a little bit more about that. Uh, but first, I want, I want to talk a little bit about that magical moment last night with, when the, the orchestra was going uh, and, and those curtains raised and, and we saw really what was became God of War. Uh, what was going through your head as you saw all of this? Don't screw up, don't screw up, don't screw up. Uh, <laughs> No, actually, I was super relaxed about the playthrough, and when I kind of got a full view of the audience, and we started playing, and everything started clicking in, it was the greatest feeling ever. I mean, it was yeah. when Kratos first came on the screen, and people stood up and cheered. Like that kind of threw me. I knew we kind of left room for applause. Like maybe people will clap here. Uh, Oh, he broke his mic. Seriously, you cannot trust this guy with any technology. Do really you want to take that off? He's <laughs> shedding the mic, right? Like, he's so tough, he breaks mics with his two fingers. Uh, but yeah, we were, I, I was so floored by that response. It was amazing. We've worked so hard for so long. So it's great now, to hear you're that. you're no stranger to the God of War franchise, actually. That's very true. So you worked on the original one. I believe, I want to say you're art director. Animation director. Animation director. I was close. That was close. It had an A in it, so you right. there. Then I like you're it. you're game director on God of War 2, which Hi. is one of my personal favorites out of the series. Thank you. you. You spent your time in the wilderness for a while. Now you're back. And, and this is a bold new vision. I mean, there's no there's no two ways about it. Tell no. me a little bit. Get Let's get inside your head a little bit about this new approach. I mean, you can even just see here, gorgeous looking game but very, very distinct visually from what yeah. we, we know of, of, of as God of War. Yeah, I think right from the beginning, we wanted to rip this whole thing up and rebuild it from scratch. Find all the things that worked. Really the things that were like, this is great, we love this, this must stay. But all the things that felt like they were not steering towards this core vision of a closer, more intimate look at Kratos' life. Like this character, the first chapter of his life really is this kind of birth of the anti-hero inside the, the era of Greek games. Like seven games, this amazing sort of introduction to this character. And just like long format television, where a character can go from one side to the polar opposite, they can be hated and loathed and then sympathized with throughout this entire sort of arc. We're doing something similar. I, I, I love the challenge of taking something like that on and making people think. So, so tell me a little bit about the universe we're seeing here. I mean, can you, can you get into any of that? I mean, this is radically different. Uh, this is definitely not, again, the, 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 the sort of Greek mythology that we all know and love. This is, it doesn't appear to be at least, this is something really fresh and different. Yeah. So it, it, tell me a little bit about how you landed on this look and, and how you landed on the setting. The setting, we kind of had kicked around a bunch of mythologies for quite a while. 
we ended up in a period that is not the Viking era. It's sort of, uh, before the Viking era is the migration, mm. and then before the migration, this sort of pre-migration era, is the era we're sort of positing that the Vikings always talk about when they say the gods have abandoned us. They used to walk the earth. Odin and Loki and Thor all walked amongst with beasts and monsters. So this period of time in Scandinavia that we're at is actually this time when the gods walk the earth. Um, and kind of the visual direction, like we've, we've worked a long time kind of finding this, this idea of isolating Kratos and his son so that they're in a world where nobody is friendly. They are not going to be high-fiving a bunch of people yeah. throughout this world. This is a, a world where everything is hostile, where the son is actually the only one who understands the language. Mm. So the player, playing as Kratos, experiences that kind of stranger to strange land where their kid actually has a lot of the power. They don't understand the language. The troll is speaking in ancient Norse. So it, it, the kid would actually understand what he's saying. Kratos and the player, we don't understand. So we kind of have this interesting sort of inroad to that which I think allows us to really focus on a new dynamic with Kratos and his son. That's awesome, and I want to talk a little bit more about that, but Christopher, I want to talk to you a little bit too, because you're now playing Kratos. This is a very iconic role for gamers, obviously. This is a little bit of a different Kratos too than we've seen in the past. So how are you approaching the character? I mean, what's, what are his motivations? How do you, how do you see him? Well, you know, the. When I first started researching Kratos, um, it, he obviously is a very visceral, very physical guy. Um, and looking as, at his, as an actor, um, I hate to use the term one-dimensional, but from an emotional standpoint, um, it, it was... But so when I looked at this script, and I, I think one of the first days that we met, one of the first things I said was, like this is like a, a, a script. It's not. It's not a. It's not a game script. Right. It's a script. It's a fleshed out story with fleshed out characters that run the gamut of uh, full emotional ranges. And and what really uh, touched me was Kratos um, and his struggle to uh, accept a new role, to not be the same old Kratos. And so just from, from that aspect, it just, there's just so many places to go emotionally. Yeah. And, and, and acting wise, I mean, it, it's, it truly is like the role of a lifetime. That's awesome. I mean, but this is, this is still Kratos, right? This is still Kratos. Mm -hmm. This is not a new Kratos. This is the Kratos we know, right? Yeah. But at a different time in his life, it seems like. Right. Yeah. He's older. He's yeah. uh, uh, kind of in that first chapter. It's kind of that that birth of the antihero. But this is Kratos as he's sort of looking through life uh, uh, through a different lens, you know. Uh, and and it, for me, it, it reflects. I think a lot of creative people when they make something. A lot of what they make is part of their own life. What they're seeing reflected back to them in their own life. And for me, I'm kind of at a different phase in my life. And that, that motivated this, like, well, that's an interesting thing. I look at the world differently now than I did when I started on God of War. Like, my, my view of the world, how I perceive characters and, and stories is totally different. And how interesting would that be if Kratos walked along that, that parallel path? I love that you mentioned that because uh, I remember I was working in the games press when God of War first came out, and a big part of the charm was how you know uh, how Christopher put it, you know, one or two dimensional Kratos was. That was actually very charming at the yeah. time. I mean, it was uh, rage. Yeah, it was rage. just rage, and you knew exactly where he stood, and he right. was very predictable, and in a, he was unpredictable in a predictable way. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. But I love this relationship with the son, and we're going to see a little bit more uh, in case you missed any of the footage from last night's press conference. Where we're kind of recapping that here. Um, it, 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 it's a little bit, he seems almost a little frustrated with his son in some instances, or, but, he, but he, he's trying to be patient. You could, it, at least from my perspective, it seems like he's, he's really trying to challenge himself to be a little bit of a different guy. Yep. I just think that's fascinating, yeah. you know? He struggles. I mean, it's, a, it's the, the human part of the whole experience. Like, no matter how fantastic the, the story is, that, that you're, the setting that you're in, these sort of real human challenges of like another person, a, a, a tiny human, uh, uh, not listening to the words that you're saying and not understanding what you think is very simple and that frustration of like, right. I can't let 
the anger out. I got. I have to convey this information. You know, and it's also, mm -hmm. I think the challenge, the Kratos challenge, is that how much of himself, his real self, is he going to show his kid? Right. Yep. You know, and and how much of his real self does he see in his kid, mm -hmm. and how much does that just crush him? Yeah. To see that. Uh, I, there, there's two universals uh, uh, um, that I absolutely love that I, I think for things to be successful and relatable, they have to have uh, commonality. They have to have themology that people can relate to. One is what changes more than having a child, more than a child, nothing. And the second, which I, I mean, how do you father when you've never been fathered? Right. You know, and trying to find that. That's really good. You know? That's great. Did you just come up with that now? I, 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 I've actually been thinking about it. God, yeah. I, we're going to pay you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is the cherry on top. That is really good. <laughs> How do you father when you never met father, man? I mean, I just came up with that. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I love this scene in particular. I think this is the one. There was, you know, some great combat, some great action in the scene in, in this entire demo. But this this little sequence right here gives me chills, even watching it again. Um, let, let's just take a second and acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just that's just awesome. <laughs> that's just so awesome. It's a the I think a lot of this whole experience started at that moment. Yeah, that, that mm -hmm. concept of the missed moment, the bad timing, you know, that idea of kids ready to open up, Kratos looking ahead, doesn't want to deal with the problem. He's mm. he's in a moment of like himself, his own after something like that. That's right. And then Kratos is ready to open up and it's kind of that, that I don't have the strength to pat you on the back, but I feel 100% comfortable and have the strength to take a giant troll down. Yeah. That's my wheelhouse, but mm. emotions and any kind of vulnerability, any kind of compliment, when, as he so beautifully put, uh, he's never been father. He grew up in the Spartan Ago, which is the most brutal military training any human being could ever undergo, right? That is, it does not breed soft, cuddly puppies. Not at all. You know? Uh, and for him to come out the other side of that one and have the will to do this is it's awesome. It's an interesting drama. Yeah. It's it's fascinating, and uh, I love that there's this sort of uh, interpersonal dynamic, this relationship at the heart of the game, clearly. Uh, that excites me a lot. I mean, we're seeing some great narrative these days. We had the Telltale guys over here earlier. I love what David Cage is, is after with Detroit becoming. Yes. Human. There is some really interesting storytelling happening in games right now. God of War is a big part of that conversation. That That's exciting. That's, that's pretty awesome. It is awesome. To be included in that, that's great. Like. Like, I, I, I'm very happy that the audience wants to consume these kinds of stories. I mean, that, that is showing a, an incredible shift in the industry and an exciting time to play games. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, what more could you ask for? Now, now, uh, more indulge, money. Yeah, more money. I'll take more I'll money. I'll take some of that, too. <laughs> if you would indulge me, I have a couple of uh, nerdy game questions to Fantastic. ask Fantastic. So, uh, you know, RPG upgrades, you know, that kind of stuff. Are we going to see kind of character progression for Kratos here? Oh, absolutely. Yeah? Yes, absolutely. Uh, what, how it, it manifests, we're still in the development phase of all sure. that stuff, but in that, that sort of uh, methodology of we're going to rip it up and rebuild it, the, the, the concept of upgrading Kratos and, and, and even the sun, you know, is taking out a whole new, whole new sort of image for this game. Awesome. Good to hear. And, uh, of course, we haven't seen the Blades of Chaos. We do see an axe. And I'm curious about this axe. This axe feels like it's uh, kind of maybe central to the game in some way. So I'm curious about that thing. It has a history. Yeah? There's a, there's a whole story that connects to a lot of the characters around this axe. Uh, I know you don't want to hear this, but I can't really talk too much about that <laughs> part. I can accept uh, it. But it, it, it was very deliberate uh, going with uh, a new weapon because we're going with a whole new way of controlling the game. You know, yeah. we are shifting everything uh, to a whole new set of buttons and a whole new way of interacting with the controller. And I think if we had something too familiar, you would start going to the old standby, yeah, square, yep. square, triangle, and why doesn't that work? You know, yep. and, and I think it's a little bit easier to introduce people to something like that. Um, but yeah, it, we had a, a, a long development cycle on that thing and it went through a lot of revisions, but where is that right now is awesome. And it's thanks to 
an incredible, incredible team who have not stopped working for years trying to get this thing going. So Santa Monica Studios. That's exciting to hear. And uh, I can only imagine, do, does the sun have a name, by the way? Uh, GameSpot says it's Charlie. Charlie? Charlie. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. That's fun. Charlie, right? Did you leak that? I did. I, I mean, you did. had a good phrase here, but leaking Charlie? I, I know. Come on. Dude. I actually said Charles. That was Charles, supposed to be a secret. It's yeah. very Norse, Charlie. Uh, it's an old, ancient Norse, Charlie. Um, that's not a thing we're talking about either. But Understood. we'll go with code name Charlie for now. <laughs> there are going to be so many Charlie trophies in this game, <laughs> it is ridiculous. I just feel bad calling him the sun constantly. At some point, I feel like I want to have a name for him. But is, is he going to be factoring the gameplay at all? Is he going to be, like, uh, helping Kratos in, while, while he fights? I mean, we yeah. saw a little bit of that there. but The, the, the kind of interesting sort of uh, narrative skeleton we have around this is the idea of teaching, of passing knowledge on from parent to child, from father to son. You know, and in that time period when survival was literally a step at a time, you know, this kind of information is what allowed you to take that next step. Mm -hmm. So it is incredibly important. And throughout the entire game, Kratos is constantly teaching the child uh, in banter and in actual interactivity. Um, but we've dedicated like an entire button to the kid, you know, sort of leaning into the, the camera a little bit and pairing that with a button so that wherever you look, Press the sun button. If it's at an enemy and you want to attack them, that one button's going to let you attack them. Oh, that's awesome. It's going to let you start a puzzle and interact with a door or something like that. Sun goes over there, you know. Uh, very simple, very accessible, but in a pinch, in sort of under duress, you can do it very quickly because it's just instinctive. It kind of feeds into that instinctual loop for the player. That'd be really handy in real life. It was uh, just occurred to me as well. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of talk in the beginning of like you'd hit the button, but he would be like, "I don't want to do that." <laughs> but we'll, we'll do that in the teenage years, where you just keep hitting the button, and they're like, "Whatever, dude, I'm not doing that." <laughs> What more is there to say? Actually, quite a lot, but we are out of time. Corey, oh. Christopher, real pleasure to have you by the show. I have a feeling we're going to be hearing a lot more about God of War. Oh, very good, very good. Thank you. And congratulations. Thank, Thank you. Hell of a show. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you right. very much. Congratulations. PlayStation.